Welcome to another lesson as part of your free six day mini course. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to find a niche and how to source products to sell online. Now, the key thing to realize when you're finding the right product to sell is that it is an iterative process. And what you absolutely do not wanna do is you don't wanna overthink things. You don't wanna get stuck in the analysis phase for too long, otherwise you're never gonna get started. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that it's not about hitting a home run with your first product. What you want to do is you want to find a product that will make you enough money to suit your lifestyle. And all you really need is a base hit. Now you might not find the best product on your first try, but the key is to do the analysis and make sure that you can make a profit, that the demand is there and that the niche is not that competitive. But overall, your goal is to find products that have enough demand to meet your income requirements. So your niche should not be too competitive and should not be saturated either. And also, you wanna find products that are not readily available in brick and mortar stores because you do not want people comparison shopping for your products. Now, a common question I get asked is, how can a small niche site possibly compete against larger stores like Walmart and Target? And here's the thing about these larger stores. They have infrastructure and supply issues to deal with, and in general, it is not economical for a Target or a Walmart to carry a large quantity of goods unless there is significant demand. And by significant demand, I mean products that have a broad-based appeal. So you notice that large stores like Walmart and Target, they generally do not carry a wide variety of specific items. So the big players like the Walmarts and the Targets, they focus on the hot mainstream products, and it generally doesn't make sense for them to focus on products that only apply to a smaller group of people. So as a result, you want to pick a niche that applies to a smaller group of people that are not on the radar of a Target or a Walmart. So here's my recommended criteria when you're looking for something to sell. One, the product should not be fragile and easy to ship. After all, we are running an e-commerce store here and we're going to be shipping products via snail mail. So you don't want them breaking in transit. The product should also not take up too much space. And once again, because we are dealing with physical products here, the smaller your product, the easier it will be to handle. Now, perhaps the most important attribute of your product is that its inherent value should be ambiguous. Remember how I told you to avoid products that are readily sold in brick and mortar stores? The reason is because we don't want people price shopping. And as a result, you want to avoid branded products. Because if there is a brand associated with the product, it'll be easy to compare prices. And once again, you want to avoid products that you can easily drive to a store and find. Now, the product should also be timeless and not go obsolete. I once had a student in my course who wanted to sell cell phone cases. Well, guess what? Every six months or so, a brand new cell phone comes out and the old case goes obsolete and you don't want to be left with inventory that you cannot sell. So as a result, I recommend that you avoid electronics or anything that can possibly go obsolete over time. But here's the thing, when you do find the right product, you will know. And here's just a couple of examples of students in my course who found the right product and started making sales right away. Tony started an online store selling essential oil jewelry online, and after her launch, with practically zero marketing, she made $25,000 in her first three months and over 100 k in her fourth month alone. The demand was there, and she's been making money ever since. Another student in my class, Sean, he started an online store selling leather working supplies. He didn't really spend much money on marketing either, and his store has managed to make six figures in a little over a year and a half. So here's the thing you are not gonna find these leather working products in regular stores because it's a very specific product that only applies to a small group of people. But just because it applies to a small group of people does not necessarily mean that you can't make a lot of money selling them. And finally, I have a student, Carmen. She lives in Australia. She started an online store selling caftans and resort wear in Australia. And the reason she kind of stumbled upon this niche is because she noticed that her market was not well served in her country. So she took full advantage, launched a store, and started making sales right away, and today she makes six figures per year. Now when it comes to finding products to sell online, the first step is to get product ideas and brainstorm, and then you want to determine whether those ideas can actually make you money. Now there are a whole bunch of places to brainstorm products, but here are just a few examples. So for example, you can find products by looking at completed items on eBay. You can look on Amazon, you can use Pinterest, you can look on Etsy to get product ideas. And then, once you have a couple of ideas in mind, you'll want to use a keyword tool like Longtail Pro to figure out how many people are searching for that product on Google to get an estimate of the amount of revenue that you can possibly make selling that product on your own website. Then, you also want to use a tool called Jungle Scout to find out how much the products you want to sell are actually making on Amazon. 
Don't worry, I'll go over all these tools in just a little bit and tell you exactly what they do. But first and foremost, I wanna show you how to brainstorm products to sell online if you have no idea what you wanna sell. Now a great way to brainstorm products when you're clueless is to use the Opportunity Finder from Jungle Scout. So not only does Jungle Scout tell you how well a product is selling on Amazon, but Jungle Scout also allows you to filter your product search to find products that meet your specific income requirements and criteria. So for example, you can have Jungle Scout return keywords and products in the arts and crafts category on Amazon that make at least $5,000 a month and have less than 100 reviews. Don't worry, in the next video after this one, I will walk you through step-by-step -step how to use the tool to brainstorm products if you have no idea what you wanna sell at all. Now, another way to do research is to go on Pinterest. And what's cool about Pinterest is that you can just type in a broad topic and it will give you a list of pretty pictures where you can get ideas of what you might wanna sell. So for example, I might type in travel gifts and then Pinterest will show me a bunch of blog posts and other articles on travel gifts that you potentially might want to sell online. Etsy is actually another great place to look. You can just click on various categories and see what's selling online. And what's nice about Etsy is that if you click on the shop, it will actually give you real sales data on what products that shop has actually been selling well. In any case, that's just a few different ways to brainstorm products online. For the purposes of today's lesson, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just run through a complete example running the numbers. And I've already handpicked a product to run through the entire process with you. And the product that I chose as an example is a leg pillow. Now these leg pillows sell between $20 and $30 online. And I'm gonna run through a quick example to show you how to calculate demand and profitability of selling leg pillows online based on people who shop using the Google search engine to find your website as well as Amazon. In this step-by-step -step demo, I'm gonna teach you how to assess the demand and the competition on Google and Amazon and how to compare prices to see how much profit that you can actually make. Now, the first demo I'm gonna show you is how to use the tool Longtail Pro. And if you wanna follow along, I want you to start over at mywifequitterjob.com, scroll all the way down and click on this link. By clicking on this link, you will get 30% off the tool and if you wanna click and sign up, you can literally follow along with me step by step. So we're gonna continue where we left off and this is what Longtail Pro looks like on the inside. So as I mentioned before, Longtail Pro is a tool that will show you how many people are searching for a particular keyword on Google. It will also tell you how hard it is to rank for that keyword in the search engines. So all I do is I type in leg pillow in the seed keywords and then Longtail Pro will spit out all the different permutations of leg pillow. Now there's a couple of columns here that I want to point out. On one column is the search volume. This is the number of searches that are performed in the last 30 days for that particular keyword. And if we look at leg pillows, leg pillows got 8,100 searches last month. And this column here is known as the KC score. KC stands for keyword competitiveness. And it's basically a number from zero to hundred that will tell you how hard it is to actually rank for that keyword term. Anything in the low to mid 30s means that it's relatively easy to rank for, and anything over 40 means that it's hard to rank for. As you can see here, Leg Pillows has a KC score of 35, which means that it's not gonna be that hard to rank for. Anyway, once you've gathered this data for your keyword, it's time to run the numbers. So what we're doing in this step is we're trying to get approximately how much money that can be made if we were to rank on the front page for that particular keyword. All right, so Longtail Pro told us that 8,100 people search for leg pillows every single month. Now the average conversion rate for an e-commerce store is between one to 3%, so let's just take 2%. And if you were to rank number one for that search term in Google, the click-through rate for that keyword term is gonna be about 37%. That's just what the CTR is for the top spot in Google. All right, so with those numbers in mind, 8,100 people search for the term leg pillow every month. The average selling price on Amazon and eBay is about 20 bucks. So if you do the math, $20 times 8,100 searches times a 0.37 click-through rate, assuming you make the top spot in search, times 0.02, which is the conversion rate, that leads to $1,198.80 per month. That is your potential revenue for that keyword. But keep in mind that that's just revenue for a single keyword and it does not account for other search terms or other traffic sources. This is just the amount of revenue that you could make if you ranked in Google for that keyword. Anyway, that is just a quick and dirty way to calculate your potential revenue on Google for your website. 
Then the next thing you wanna do is figure out how well your products are selling on marketplaces like Amazon. And in order to analyze the revenue for Amazon, we're gonna need a tool called Jungle Scout. So if you guys wanna follow along step-by-step, step, go to my blog over at mywifequitterjob.com, scroll all the way down to the very bottom, and then click on this link, which will give you 30% off of the tool. Now, Jungle Scout is actually a tool that I use almost every single day. It is probably the most important tool for product research, and you can get it for 30% off. And then once you've downloaded and installed Jungle Scout into your Chrome browser, it's ready to continue on. So the next step is to just go to amazon.com, and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in leg pillows here. And then I'm gonna click on this little orange box, which launches the Jungle Scout tool. And what Jungle Scout does is it takes all the products on the front page for my search and it tells me exactly how much money that product is generating every single month. And it tells me how many reviews that listing gets and basically how many sellers are selling that product as well. So I'm just gonna sit here and let this populate for a bit and then I'm gonna expand it. And it looks like Leg Pillows generates about 1,500 sales per month. Usually my criteria is at least 150 to 300. So this is well above that number. I usually like the average selling price to be at least 20 bucks, and it looks like the average selling price is $33 here. And uh, finally, what I like to see is like an even distribution of revenue across all the sellers on the front page. And as you can see here, there are sellers that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars selling leg pillows online. So clearly there's a ton of demand for leg pillows on Amazon as well. Now in a subsequent lecture, I'll teach you how to use Jungle Scout to really brainstorm different products that you can sell online. But this Chrome app here for the Jungle Scout will give you a good idea of how much revenue you can make if you have an idea of what you wanna sell. Now the final step is to find out how much profit that you can make selling these items. And the tool I like to use for that is Alibaba. Alibaba is a search engine for Chinese manufacturers and they often have prices on their site as soon as you type in a keyword. So I'm just gonna type in leg pillows here. And right off the bat, what you'll notice here are that the listings that you find on Alibaba look almost exactly like the ones on Amazon. So for example, this picture here almost looks exactly like this one or this one. Essentially, people are taking these items from Alibaba and then selling them on Amazon at a profit. As you can see here, a leg pillow sells between $2.93 to $3.00 or a dollar to $5, and they're being sold on Amazon for like 20 to $25. Crazy, right? People are sourcing this product for three bucks and selling it for 20 to $25. But don't get too excited just yet because the prices quoted on Alibaba don't include shipping to your warehouse. And just as a general rule of thumb, I like to tack on at least 30% onto the sales price to find my true landed cost of goods. So for example, in this case, it's gonna cost me three bucks, but I'm just gonna estimate for profit purposes that it actually cost me five to six dollars to get it shipped to my warehouse in the United States. But even still, even if I'm getting these for five or six bucks and selling them for 20 to 25 dollars, that is a pretty good profit margin. So after you run the numbers and you see that there's an attractive profit margin for the product that you wanna sell, you wanna keep in mind that you do not wanna sell me too products. You do not want to take what you find on Alibaba and just slap it on Amazon because there's going to be a lot of copycats out there, right? You want your product to have a very strong value proposition and you want to be the best product out on the market. So the next step that I do usually is I go on Amazon and I find the best seller for that particular product. And then I click on it and then I go down and look at the two and three star reviews. And I just basically look for what people are complaining about. Looks like some people are complaining that this leg pillow is too small. Other people were complaining that it was just too hot. Other people were complaining that it fell off in the middle of the night and that it could use a strap. So guess what? If I were to sell leg pillows on my own, I would probably sell a larger size leg pillow. I would probably add some sort of cooling layer so it wouldn't sleep as hot. And then finally, I'd probably add some sort of Velcro strap so that it stayed on your legs or between your legs during the night. Now adding these extra features would make the product costs go up, but at the same time, I could probably raise my prices. And at the same time, I would have a very unique product on Amazon that is superior to the best selling item. Remember, that's your goal. Your goal isn't to just sell any product. Your goal is to sell the best and highest quality product that you can. 
Okay, so that's just a quick and dirty way that I estimate profitability and how I find vendors to source the products that I actually want to sell online. Here's the thing when it comes to sourcing products. You actually don't have to import from overseas, but what you'll find is that because the labor is so much cheaper over in China and some of the Asian countries, it is generally going to be less expensive to get your products from overseas. However, that doesn't mean that you have to source your products from over there. You can just as easily find vendors in the US and here are just some pros and cons between sourcing internationally versus domestically. Now in general, if you source something domestically, the manufacturing costs are going to be much higher because the cost of labor is higher. But on the flip side, if you source domestically, the minimum order quantity that you actually have to purchase will be lower and it's going to be a lot easier to contact vendors. So for example, there will be no cultural or language barriers. You don't have to ship something by boat or by plane from somewhere really far away. The lead times for manufacturing will be a lot shorter, and if you find something in your home country, drop shipping could be an option as well. Now oftentimes, you can actually make an arrangement with the vendor so that you take orders and the vendor actually ships the product to the end customer. But if you do decide to source internationally, you will absolutely get the best price for your products. The only downside is that you'll have to order in higher order quantities. You have to ship the product from overseas, which has longer lead times, and it's going to be more expensive to ship from there. Also, since you'll be dealing with factories, the time to produce your products will be significantly longer as well, so you really need to plan ahead if you decide to source from overseas. Now, if you want to find vendors within the US, I actually highly recommend a tool called Reference USA. Basically, Reference USA is a database of every single US vendor. And this tool is free, but it can only be accessed at your local library. So if you're interested in looking for vendors in the US, head out to your library and look for Reference USA. Now, as part of this six day mini course, a subsequent lesson will actually walk you through step by step how to use Reference USA. Now, there's also a couple of other sites. Wholesale Central is actually a website directory of trade shows in the United States. Worldwide Brands is a great directory to find dropshippers online. And in terms of overseas vendors, I already showed you how to use Alibaba. Now, another way to find overseas vendors is to go to some of the trade shows that are over there, like the Canton Fair or the Global Sources Summit that are in Hong Kong and China, respectively. So here's a picture of me at the Canton Fair. And if you can, I highly advise that you actually make the trip to China because it makes things so much easier. The Canton Fair is where thousands of Chinese vendors congregate, and you can easily find all of your suppliers there. It is literally like a shopping mall. You go through and you can talk to each vendor and instantly have access to a bunch of different products to source for your online store all in one place. So here's just an idea of what it looks like. I snapped this picture kind of higher from the fair, but it'll give you an idea of what it looks like. The fair is organized into booths. And basically once you're there, you just go from booth to booth. And if you find something that you like, you just say, Hey, I'd like to source that. Can you please tell me what the cost is going to be and the minimum order quantity? And then you just go from there. Every booth will have at least one person that speaks English. Anyways, that is just a high level overview on how to find products to sell online and how to evaluate the product to see how much money you can actually make. You can actually figure out how much that product is actually selling by using Jungle Scout to figure out how much of that product is being sold on Amazon. And you can use Longtail Pro to get an estimate of how many people are searching for that product on Google. And then finally, I showed you various ways and places to actually source that product online. Now keep in mind that I offer a class that actually goes over all these steps in depth over at ProfitableOnlineStore.com. Now if you decide to join my class, and if you like what I've presented so far, it is actually in your best interest to not have a niche before you join, because what I've found is that a lot of people join my class and they have these preconceived notions of what to sell. And oftentimes the products that students want to sell are either too competitive or they don't have enough demand. But if you do sign up, you will learn how to find the right niche and how to find the right product to sell. And actually a significant portion of my class is dedicated towards this because unless you have something to sell, you can't really get started. Now as an extra value add to students, I actually offer to evaluate a student's product niche and give them my opinion before they get started. And that often gives students peace of mind before they begin. I'll show you how to source your products, whether it be through drop shipping, through domestic wholesale or importing from China. And I'll walk you through the entire process. And then I'll show you how to step your own branded website as well as sell on Amazon. But remember, the end goal here is to start a long term business. In order to do that, you really need to establish a brand. Also, keep in mind that you don't need any technical knowledge at all to start your own website or your online store. I will also teach you how to leverage marketplaces like Amazon as well.
Now for the purposes of the class, I usually have students validate their products on Amazon and eBay to make sure that they're going to sell before they start their own online stores. But I've actually had cases where students during the validation phase have made six figures right off the bat because Amazon's marketplace is so large. And then finally, I will show you how to get traffic to your own site, optimize it for conversions, and generate your own sales. And in fact, I will hold your hand throughout this entire process. Now, if you're interested in signing up, I can honestly say that my class is the most comprehensive e-commerce course on the market. There's a library of over 300 videos that cover every single aspect of starting an online store. And as a value add, I give live lectures every single week so you can actually ask me questions in real time. After all, starting your own business is not going to be a black and white affair. You are going to have questions that are going to be very specific to your business, and I will actually answer them live in real time once a week. Now, I can't possibly know everything about e-commerce, so periodically I'll invite guest experts to come on the show. For example, I've had Spencer Hawes, the creator of Longtail Pro, come in to talk about SEO. I've had Zach Smith come in to talk about Kickstarter. I've had various Amazon experts come in to talk about Amazon. I've had lawyers come in to talk about the legal aspects of starting an online store. Basically, all these resources are available at your disposal as soon as you sign up. Now, I remember when my wife and I first started our online store, it was a very lonely process. And so as a result, I have a private Facebook group where you can actually interact with other like-minded students. And at this point, I have thousands of students in the course, and you can easily find other students to bounce your ideas off of or to hold each other accountable for their progress. Now, in terms of the class, I just want to let you know that I run it for fun, and it is not a volume course. I'm not out here trying to nickel and dime you, so as a result, there are no upsells whatsoever. As soon as you join the class, it'll be just one single fee for lifetime membership. Now, personally, I really enjoy teaching the students, and it really shows in the way I run the class. So whenever you have any arbitrary question, I actually offer 24-7 email support. You can email me, and I'll respond within 48 hours. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. There are many more to come, and I hope to see you on the inside of my full-blown course.